I saw spirituality was on the cover of LA magazine. And I don't know, this is probably going back five years now. And I was so excited to find, to see spirituality on the cover of LA magazine. But when I opened LA magazine to read about it, it was all about religion. It wasn't about spirituality. And I think there's still a very big misunderstanding about the differences between religion and spirituality. And my definition of spirituality is the relationship that we have with this essence, with this energy part of us, with this invisible part of us, this life force that is animating through us. That is what spirituality is about. And it doesn't really have any rules. It has universal law, which is, you know, these laws are as real as the law of gravity, but we don't study them. We don't understand them. We don't know how they work. And so we're not in cooperation with them. But when we're out of cooperation, our life doesn't work. And that's like a clear sign and a clear indication that we're out of cooperation. Namaste, sweet souls. My name is Shilpa, and you're listening to the Omni Mindfulness Podcast. I am a mindset and meditation coach for professional women and mompreneurs. The purpose of this show is to offer stories and content that allows you to increase your awareness of your authentic self and be inspired by connecting to the personal and professional stories of other souls. Souls who are walking the walk and living everyday human experiences with inspired intentions. These are the stories that will expand your consciousness and spark within you to ask, what if... Each season, I offer content to help you create a holistic lifestyle that embodies spirituality, mindfulness, mindset, and energy awareness. Through my conversations with experts in their niche area and solo casts from yours truly, my intention is to help you holistically revitalize, reset, and relax your body, mind, and spirit. I'm your host and founder of Omni Mindfulness. So ask yourself, what if just one story could be the catalyst to shift the trajectory of my life? What if I become instrumental in serving other souls to realize their true self? And what if my soul's higher purpose is in the realization of omni-mindfulness joy? It's never too late to rewrite your story. And now, today's episode. Welcome back, sweet souls. This is your host, Shilpa. I wanted to share some exciting news about a little challenge I'm running as I'm trying to get more people to discover this podcast and the conversations that inspire those who value personal growth. And the best way to do that is to leave reviews. You can leave a review on Spotify, Google Podcast, or Apple Podcast. So my request to you is to leave a review if you feel that you've received any value at all from these episodes of Omni Mindfulness. It would mean so much to me if you could write a little review regarding any episode that resonated with you. Please take a screenshot of that review and email it to me at omnimindfulness at gmail.com. In return, I will offer you my one-page guide to spark your meditation practice through Sankalpa. Sankalpa is the Sanskrit word for intention setting. Along with this, you'll receive a link to my guided meditation that will guide you through an intention setting meditation, positive affirmations, which you can practice daily. I guarantee that this gift will help you start a daily intention setting practice with a spark. It is my gift for you for being a listener, being a supporter, and of course, to enable you to manifest the best meditation practice. And we are now in my fifth podcast season, exploring the topic of spirituality. Each month, my guest and I delve deeper. In January, we explore spiritual entrepreneurship. In February, spiritual leadership and wisdom. And wrapping up with spiritual awareness in March. Stay tuned. And up next, I am so honored to introduce Donna Bond. Donna is an author spiritual life and business coach, thought leader, catalyst for personal transformation, and igniter of light. 
At the age of 44, at the top of her game, Donna woke up with the realization that all this wasn't all that. She was mentally stuck, emotionally unfulfilled, physically exhausted, and spiritually bankrupt. After a 28 year long run as a corporate marketing executive who had it all, Donna enrolled herself in a master's program in spiritual psychology, which changed her life in every possible way. Donna now supports the global transformation of consciousness taking place on the planet today by assisting clients around the world to personally evolve. To new heights of meaningful success, personal fulfillment, and spiritual aliveness using the principles and practices of spiritual psychology. Donna offers inspiring classes, workshops, and transformative in depth life coaching programs designed to help you break free of the self imposed limitations and old stories of not enoughness. The results are revealed through a sense of authentic empowerment, helping people trust their higher self, honor their human self, and hold reverence for their whole self who makes this epic life journey. Donna assists individuals and groups to live into their fullest realized expression of who they came here to be from the inside out. She is the author of Original Wisdom, Harness the Power of Authentic You, and a graduate of the University of Santa Monica, from where she holds a Master's of Arts in Spiritual Psychology with an emphasis on consciousness, health, and healing, as well as her soul centered professional coaching and soul centered facilitation certifications. Donna stepped down from the role of Director of Marketing with the Ritz Carlton and has since combined her business savvy, her intuitive gifts, and soul centered coaching expertise to make a more meaningful contribution in the world. Her heartfelt intention is to raise the vibration of the planet by supporting people to awaken into their true nature, leading to a more intentional, balanced, authentically empowered life filled with aliveness, meaning, and purpose. She and her husband, award winning oil painter Paul Bond, currently live part time in Southern California and part time in Costa Rica. And now, here is Donna. Donna, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Shilpa, for having me. It's my honor to be here. I've been wanting to connect with you for a long time, as I had expressed just moments ago. On the topic of spiritual wisdom and leadership, I feel like everything I've known of you, know about you, you have so much wisdom in that area. I'd love for you to share a little bit about your background and how you arrived at where you are now.、Mm, thank you. Yeah, well, I was in you know, the corporate world for 28 years. And I woke up, quite literally, woke up、um, at the age of 44, which is how old I was when my father died, or how old my father was when he died. And it was like suddenly a really big wake up call. And I was in a massive rush to really figure out my life. And on the advice of a psychic, I enrolled myself in a master's program in spiritual psychology with the University of Santa Monica. And the rest is history. You know, it has been, I can't believe it. It started in 2013 when I first entered into that program. And I can't believe it's going to be 10 years, you know, a full decade. And I am absolutely a completely different person from the inside out. You know, I don't recognize myself anymore when I look in the mirror. And what's also really interesting, you know, life is such a mirror and life is always reflecting to us. And we touched on this briefly. I'm now. Living in Costa Rica, which I don't really know how I got here. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing here. And it's just, so, it's so interesting that everything has changed in my life, everything. And so now, as I've gone through this massive inner change, now I am seeing a massive outer change, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. I over and over have. Learned through people who knew me, and they knew I wanted to shift, make that change. And 
they were seeing something in me and they would say, what you're feeling now, whatever that energy was in corporate is reflecting on the inside Mm -hmm. and it's coming out outside. And now when I started to make that shift, all the souls that started coming into my life and the energy and experiences were reflecting what was coming on inside. Yeah. Yes. Life is our mirror for sure. Life is our mirror. One of the things I know you've spoken about are these concepts of the sacred truth and universal laws and tapping into the energy of the quantum. How, how do those concepts now, um, I, I would say manifest as you now have moved to Costa Rica? Mm. <laughs> Gosh, that's such an interesting question and you're so intuitive it's a little comical you know um there is a lot of opportunities for surrender in Costa Rica and um I honestly believe that part of the reason my soul has led me here which I absolutely believe is the case is because um there's no taming the jungle There's sort of no uh, mastering or controlling the rainforest. And Costa Rica, while they are very advanced in a lot of ways, they are certainly not as advanced as the good old US of A. So there have just been, for example, Costa Rica is playing in the World Cup right now. So businesses literally close because people are like, sorry, I'm going to watch the World Cup. (laughs) And so this has been such an opportunity to practice what I preach, right? This is the opportunity to really be mindful and to cooperate with natural law. And natural law is whatever is unfolding in front of us in this very moment, whether we like it or not. And so I have really had to return myself to my center and come back to that inner awareness, that inner knowing that even though this doesn't look like my plan right now, there is a greater plan that is unfolding that is beyond my comprehension. And I can either fight against it and I'll hurt myself (laughs) or I can be in alignment with it. And I won't have to suffer through it. So, um, I mean, moving from California to Costa Rica, there's quite a few weather differences. I mean, we arrived here um, in the latter part of September, and it has been the rainiest rainy season for the past 30 years in Costa Rica. So I'm a California girl, right? There is no rain ever. It's sunny 365 days a year. So there's, that's been a really big adjustment. And truthfully, I have loved it. And it's been a really different experience and a different feeling. And all of this water comes with all kinds of logistical challenges and like things that we have to navigate that we never even considered navigating before, you know? So um, there have been a lot of a lot of opportunities to take a seat back in our own energy, both my husband and I, and um, breathe and surrender and come into that deep acceptance of the moment of whatever's happening, (laughs) regardless of, you know, what we think about it. It sounds like a culture shock to some degree. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, there's probably a level of appreciation, like you said, being a California girl, I I can resonate with that being most of my life in California. However, I spent my high school years in India and moved there during monsoon season. Yeah, that that's exciting. (laughs) I I, I can tell like the rain is a, a, a different, I would say, level of nature that we don't experience, but it comes with its own rules. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, um, the sun came out after probably, I don't know, a six or seven day period of just relentless 
relentless rain. And it was really early in the morning and we took a walk down to the river that's right near our house. And we both stood in the sun and we said, I'll never take you for granted again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think one of the really interesting things that I'm noticing and aware of is the contrast that's available here in Costa Rica. And, you know, we live in the land of contrast. We live in the land of polarity here on planet earth, no matter what country we're in, but there's been, um, you know, an enchantment around the contrast here, because for example, today it is a magnificently sunny day and I have a blue bejeweled ocean with this emerald green blankets of, a, of jungle around the blue and the sky and the clouds. And it's magnificent, you know, it's magnificent. So it definitely um, takes you for a ride swinging from one point of contrast to the next yeah we call it maya in 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 the indian language and i constantly have to remind myself that you can't see the light unless there's a black backdrop yeah now being in costa rica maybe you can share a little bit about the some of the mission you have in, planned out for me <laughs> <laughs> although nature is having its own rules <laughs> yeah well to be honest with you Shilpa this was completely arranged by the universe me being here in Costa Rica um, I'm kind of an indoor girl I like high heel shoes and expensive pocketbooks <laughs> and um, I would have never my my personality would have never, ever picked Costa Rica. Um, my mother actually purchased some land here 15 years ago, thinking that she was going to retire here. And um, she ended up meeting Bob and falling in love and getting married. And Bob said, Betty, we're not going to Costa Rica. So the land sat here for literally for 15 years. And at one point, my mother called my husband and I and said, hey, do you guys want to build a house with me? And we said, oh, we love you, mom. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, a few years after that, she tried to sell it. But for whatever reason at the time, no one wanted to buy it. And she finally said, listen, please take this off my hands. I don't want to worry about the taxes anymore. I don't want to deal with it. You know, your husband's a surfer, go surf in Costa Rica, please, uh, you know, alleviate this from me, from my, from me. And so we all came out here together and it was sort of a big sell job on me. So we agreed to accept this land from her as a gift, um, which is pretty extraordinary, right? That two and a half acres of land just kind of dropped in my lap literally. And then my husband was like, come on, let's build a house. Let's build a house. Let's build a house. And I'm like, we don't have any money to build a house. And I kept saying to him, when the money falls out of the sky, then we'll build a house. Well, Shilpa, guess what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so Paul received an inheritance from his father's passing. And we came here in March of 2020 and we signed a contract with a builder to build a house and we flew home and they closed the country and we could not get into Costa Rica for one year. We built the entire house over WhatsApp, which was quite a learning in and of itself um, from a communication standpoint between my husband and I and, um, and our builder. And anyways, we built the house and we rented it out for about a year and a half. And I was here earlier this year in March, facilitating my first women's retreat here. And I just kept receiving these massive downloads, these massive knowingness that I am to come here and I am to live here. And believe me, I was crying and saying, please, no, I don't want to do that. And we went home. And started playing games with the universe and said, well, maybe if we can get 
this astronomical number for our piece of real estate in California, that will be a sign. Well, that took 48 hours. Yeah, we sold our house. And then we had commitments to be in California through the end of September. And the people, the wonderful people who bought our home in California said, oh, you can stay here for free until October. And then she was like, oh, and by the way, I'd love to acquire all of your furniture, which we were moving into a fully furnished home in Costa Rica. So the universe has set this up for me in such a way that it has been undeniable that, you know, the sea has parted and all I had to do was say yes. And the longer I am on this journey and the more I am in this life, the more interested I am in paying attention to the guidance and the wisdom of my soul. And this was a soul move, if I ever saw one. <laughs> so my personality and my ego are just trying to keep up. The, the story just, I had goosebumps while you're articulating the details, the nuances, the path that was laid for you by the universe, undeniably telling you, this is your path. Yeah. Wow. Now, if more leaders in our world could listen to that voice, what a world we would be living in. Yes. Imagine it. Imagine it. And that that is part of my mission. I know you asked about my mission. Um, you know, Shilpa, I don't know that I can really answer that question. To be 100% truthful, um, I it's it's hard for me to put a form around it. Um, I am in the essence of it and I will keep listening and I will open myself to the way the universe is speaking to me now here in Costa Rica and what that means and where the aliveness shows up for me and where those, you know, sparks of energy come into my awareness and which ones I'm going to follow. Um, I mean, my mission remains the same in that I want people to begin to identify with this higher wisdom filled part of themselves and to make contact with that part of themselves, to stop ignoring that part of themselves and embody it more fully and then live from there because when we can live from there we see our life and we see ourselves with such reverence with such honor with such loving and respect for the epic human journey that we make that's what you just expressed, um, I'm my my intuition asked me to ask you the question: How do leaders or those who believe that they're called to be a leader, how do they know how to listen to that voice? How do you tap into that wisdom? Yeah, um, I think the first step is to recognize that we have a lot more intelligence than just our IQ. And we have not only our intellectual intelligence, which most of us in the corporate world, I know that this is true for myself, have been taught that, you know, that is what you rely on. You've got to know all the answers. You've got to always be prepared. You've got to you know, have all the information all the time about everything for every minute of every day, for every subject, for every, we've all been sort of trained to believe that that is our single operating system. And that has produced, as we all know, anxiety, illness, trauma. It, it's just, it's no way to live, right? But 
what we overlook is the information that we get from our emotional body, right? We have emotional intelligence. We have a physical intelligence. You know, our bodies are giving us information all of the time, but we ignore it. We ignore it. And certainly I wrote a book about it, <laughs> ignoring mine. And then of course we have our spiritual intelligence and our spiritual intelligence is the true expression of who we came here to be. And when we're trying to fit ourselves, you know, if we're a, a square peg and we're trying to go into a round hole, it's never going to work, but we force it. And when we force it, we hurt ourselves. So I think the first step is to recognize that we are multidimensional beings and that we have a lot more intelligence and wisdom on different levels of our consciousness that are beyond our intellect. And that shift that occurs when it occurs for some souls, I believe sometimes there's a catalyst that triggers that desire for making that shift yet there's so much stigma it, I, I think it, things are shifting but there's so much stigma around the just the concept of spirituality yeah well i think people are people by and large i i saw spirituality was on the cover of la magazine and i don't know this is probably going back five years now and i was so excited to, find, to see spirituality on the cover of LA Magazine. But when I opened LA Magazine to read about it, it was all about religion. It wasn't about spirituality. And I think there's still a very big misunderstanding about the differences between religion and spirituality. And my definition of spirituality is the relationship that we have with this essence, with this energy part of us, with this invisible part of us, this life force that is animating through us. That is what spirituality is about. And it doesn't really have any rules. It has universal law, which is, you know, these laws are as real as the law of gravity, but we don't study them. We don't understand them. We don't know how they work. And so we're not in cooperation with them. But when we're out of cooperation, our life doesn't work. And that's like a clear sign and a clear indication that we're out of cooperation is that our life doesn't work. We push and force our way against life and life is bigger than us <laughs> and when we are out of cooperation it not only manifests like you were expressing earlier in the body in a physical energy because that energy gets locked those emotions then manifest into our this physical stuff but it also manifests in the culture around us having been in corporate culture one of the things i noticed was sometimes when the energy was not so positive those souls around me in the company's culture the emotions and physical well-being was reflecting that energy yes well i think that the group is very strong right the power of the group is very strong and that is where we need a lot of courage mm -hmm. for you know, women leaders, for example, these days, I work with so many amazing women who are standing forward and courageously disagreeing or not, not going along with the boys club anymore. And that is scary right? That is not an easy thing to do. And we've got to do it with compassion and groundedness and resolve instead of with againstness or force or pushing, because then we're just sort of 
in our masculine and that's kind of how we got ourselves to where we are absolutely i did a whole series on feminine energy and one of the key takeaways for a lot of people that were my guests is we're not talking about as of female male we're talking about the essence of energy that's in all human um but it's the essence of energy that's in all of us yet we've somehow through western culture have been conditioned maybe other cultures as well that to not give that energy um credit where it it needs to have it needs to shine yeah and that's where the intuition is i believe that's where some of the innate wisdom is well when we when we um want to tap into our innate wisdom it's a place of receiving it's the yin not the yang right it's the opening and the allowing when that can come in and i don't know about you but in the corporate arena there's not a lot of room for the yin there's not a lot of room for the pause for the breath for the spaciousness that is required to allow those gifts to just show up and you know, it's so funny. I can remember being at the board table and I worked on a team. I was the West Coast vice president of sales and marketing for a little hospitality company. And every quarter we would have to go report out the results of our hotels. And I would open my mouth and I'm kind of a deep thinker, right? Like I collect my thoughts before I speak and I would begin to say something. And if my pause was a little too long, my male counterpart would jump in and speak for me. Hey, sweet souls, if you are seeking to start 2023 strong, then you are in for a treat. In 2023, I'll be hosting regular free mindfulness workshops starting in February 2023, aimed at professional working women or mompreneurs. With each workshop, by signing up, you receive free guides that will support you not only in terms of your daily routine, rituals, but also to help you attract abundance and manifest the dreams that you desire. Did you know that taking your manifestations to the next level is about integration of tools and mindfulness modalities that help you cultivate the skills to recognize what your current abundance mindset is and build your ability to receive. You can learn practical skills combined with powerful mindfulness tools to overcome your fears, eliminate anxiety, and take control of your life. Click on the link at the bottom of the show notes to get on the early sign-up list. Namaste. Stay. And this was the norm. This was the norm. And this is the norm in a lot of a lot of places. And so at that time in my life, did I have even the awareness or the courage to ask him to be patient with me and for me as one of my supportive team members that I'm in entirely capable of answering the question and I like to collect my thoughts before I speak so would you give me the support and the space please to be able to do that for our team now I didn't do that because I didn't have the skills or the awareness or the wherewithal or the courage and this is really what's needed. And these are uncomfortable places and they're uncomfortable spaces. And they're very liberating. They're very revealing and invigorating and um, rewarding for women to support themselves in what they want. I wish that I had had someone like your, you when I was in corporate. There were so many opportunities where I would seek out mentorship. 
and your book and your wisdom, all that you stand for, it shows that there are souls now that are ready to support other women that are in that space that might be feeling like I have to act like a man to get treated with respect or I have to leave. In my case, I'm not saying I left, but I didn't feel like that energy was going to sustain me. And if you know what's interesting about it is now I'm, this is coming to my mind is there are souls who are gifts in those corporations and their gifts are not shining. Yes. And you know, therein lies the hero's journey uh, as Joseph Campbell would call it. Um, this is how we're all here birthing ourselves, birthing our expression and you know, life is going to support us in birthing that by setting up these situations that we need to grow through. If it were easy, it wouldn't be happening. <laughs> yeah. And it's not just about the opportunities for women, but certainly there is a space now where the work that you are doing, I don't even want to call it work. It's the service that you are providing. Thank you. That will trigger an evolution of change. Yes. It's it's the catalyst. Because just even you and I, if someone is listening to this podcast, they're like, yeah, I'm in that place. When I pause, I get interrupted. So I was there many times. And sometimes yeah. it makes you doubt yourself. Like, do I have worth? It, is my voice or the thoughts I'm about to express? And an interesting, another part of it you sort of alluded to is how did you, like, I would remember when I'd be in corporate, when I needed to articulate or justify the rationale behind certain ideas, I had stopped saying things like, like came to me intuitively. Mm -hmm. And years and years of being told, well, what do you mean by intuition? I'm just like, it's just a gut feeling. I just know. Yes. I wouldn't even acknowledge that part of myself. And that is what led to so much illness for me. Um, and I share this in my book, but um, what, what started my journey was a frozen shoulder. And the frozen shoulder was just this gorgeous metaphor for where I was in life, because I knew that I was deeply unhappy, but I was not doing anything about it, right? All I was doing is complaining, complaining to myself, believing that I didn't have what it, what it takes or believing um, that I could never rebuild the career that I had because I had such a successful career. And, you know, it, I had been doing it for 28 years. So I had this operating belief system that, well, it's going to take you another 28 years to, you know, get back to the same level of income or to, you know, feel like you've had the success that you think that you've had in this space. And all of that was a misunderstanding. Those were all misbeliefs and lies. But I had this frozen shoulder and that's how I was in my life. I was frozen. I was frozen. And below the surface of that was breast cancer growing in my chest. So that I believe was as a result of years and years of repression, of repressing my own expression, repressing my own ideas, my own opinions by wronging myself and not acknowledging, just like we started talking about all these other parts of myself. You know, I had so much pressure on my intellect and having to have the right answer and having to know it all. And, and that was definitely a recipe for imbalance. You are certainly not alone, though. I I keep hearing innumerable stories over and over. 
that that which is manifesting on the outside in those challenges, they translate into the physical energy, which is this. There's no separation between the different bodies. They're, they're, we're all these en energetic bodies. Mm -hmm. That is part of us. However, the dis-ease that appears in the body is based on what's going on, like you were mentioning earlier, on the outside. Well, but it starts on the inside, Shilpa. So we all want, we definitely want to be clear about that because, you know, what was happening with my with my frozen shoulder, it was a manifestation of me not taking responsibility. It was a manifestation of me not taking action. And so consequently, I was frozen. Um, my coach, as a matter of fact, at that time, she said to me, well, when are you going to take responsibility for your health? And I was so triggered. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm doing everything. I'm seeing this doctor and that doctor and I'm going to therapy and I'm doing, you know, physical therapy and blah, blah, blah. I'm giving her the laundry list. And she's like, but when are you going to own mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, when are you going to own the idea of radiant health and because I kept putting the healing outside of myself I wasn't healing and as soon as she said that I began affirming my health in that moment I began putting my attention and my focus and my energy on my health not on my problem yeah. And I 120% agree. It's on the inside and those things that start manifesting. Well, all of our souls are on their own path, on their own journey of learning and evolution. And we can never know what that soul over there needs, right? We're, we're, having enough trouble figuring out what our own soul needs for its growth and evolution. And when we can remember that, we can give each other space for it. I do find that some people just would rather complain than do the hard work. And it is hard work, right? Falling into the discipline of really having a true meditation or spiritual practice like it it takes some discipline to fold that into your lifestyle and to make it part of your lifestyle rather than just treating it like something else that's on the to-do list and that's the difference right between how it operates in our consciousness throughout the entire day or how we treat it as a to-do list item. Absolutely. It is part of my lifestyle, but I can tell you it, it's not always easy. Yeah. Oh, I actually missed mine today. I miss, I miss my routine today. Um, sometimes just, I get in my head space. I, so I'm not like perfect. Like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Well, I hear you. <laughs> I, I was like too, too wrapped up in my head space. And I realized, well, I have a routine, a spiritual routine every mm -hmm. morning, but it requires so much discipline. If I am a little bit off here, there's a ripple effect. For sure. But here's the other thing. I allow myself grace just enough to say, okay, it doesn't, it's, it's going to be the imperfect practice today. Yes. Five minutes, five minutes, not 15, maybe not half hour like I'd like, and maybe a 15 minute quick Qigong. Yes. Blend that together and you, you're still in balance. Yes. Yeah. But the grace is needed. Every day. Every day. So for potential people who are still thinking, you know, what's that spirituality stuff? I'm a leader, but am I a spiritual leader? What nuggets or wisdom would you like to impart on them saying, maybe I'll dip my toes into this, this world. 
Well, I think when we talk about spiritual leadership, really what we're talking about is inner leadership, right? It's like leading yourself. And as we can all lead ourselves, we show up differently. We make different choices. Our different choices lead to different experiences, which lead to different emotions and different behaviors. So inner leadership would be taking that time out, right? And really um, applying that discipline to one's life that is going to have um, a positive habit created that will then pay dividends in other parts of our life. Um, I study A Course in Miracles. I'm a student of A Course in Miracles. And, you know, people who study the course, they say that a miracle takes place anytime someone changes their mind. And I really love that idea that sometimes we're afraid to change our minds because we've been doing it this way our whole life or because we don't know what the results will be if we do it a different way because we're afraid to get it wrong, quote unquote. So we dig our heels in and we continue to do the same thing, expecting different results, right? Which we know is the definition of insanity according to Einstein. I want to invite people to change their mind, change your mind about yourself, change your mind about your environment, about your spouse, open yourself to a different perspective, to a different way of seeing, to a different way of relating. And in so doing, you open yourself to the wisdom of the universe that's trying to reach you. I have to stay silent for a moment, just absorbing that truth. So profound. Over and over, what's so interesting you just said, it's almost like God's talking or universe is talking through you to me over and over in the last few years when I was trying to leave corporate, I would come home in tears telling my husband the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. I'm good at this, but I don't know if I need to be here. I need to be somewhere else and make my shift or have my live my purpose there. But it's the unknown, taking that risk was scary. Yes, it, it absolutely is, Shilpa, but I, I can speak from experience and let you know that the gifts are born in the leap. The gifts are born in the leap that we can arrange and plan and strategize and we can figure out how many steps it's going to take and the return on the investment and the cost benefit analysis, but none of that can prepare you for what the universe has in store for you that can only be birthed through you when you have the courage to make the leap. And this is what I help people do. This is literally what I help people do. And I'm not, I'm not saying to be irresponsible and do crazy things and go off and put yourself in fi financial jeopardy. And that's not what I'm saying. Because people want to draw conclusions, you know, oh, she's off her rocker telling people to go quit her job. That's not what I'm saying. And there is a formula to it. And we're not going to be able to get to that formula today. But, um, you know, I guess the one, the one first step is to change your mind. Well, thank you so much, Donna. Oh my goodness. I, I hope I can bring you back again because I know I can go deeper in this 
concept. And there's so many other places where I know I'd love to just explore and learn from you. What you just said was profound, though. For me, it was profound. Thank you, Shilpa. I am a channel for the divine. I can see. I was almost in tears when you said the whole definition of sanity. I'm like, oh, I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And honestly, as that was coming out of my mouth, I was thinking, like my personality was thinking, why are you saying that right now? Well, I mean, I really think you you were just channeled for that because literally, if you know me really well, and my husband has heard me say this for years, and the other um, metaphor I've used aside from that definition is, okay, Rich, my husband's name is Rich, I go, Rich, um, it's Groundhog's Day again. Because, <laughs> I would, you know, was living through that same thing again, knowing how it's going to turn out. Yeah. Well, um, the, the, the group coaching journey that I lead called empower the authentic you is the formula. The formula is in there. And the formula is also in my book. It's not spelled out as, as clearly as a formula. Um, you know, because as we work with this material, things constantly come into, more of a clear view and things crystallize and they change and they evolve. And it's just such a privilege and an honor to uh, teach, right? Because as we teach, we learn. And as I share, I am made aware of different perspectives and viewpoints and understandings that could have never come to me unless I was trying to articulate it to someone else. And I think there's like an energetic thing that goes on, right? In the articulation that the way in which I am called to share it with you might be very different than the way in which I'm going to share it with somebody else. And so I get this 360 degree, like, you know, multidimensional view of what it is I'm sharing that has all these cool nuances to it in any event. Um there's some clearly defined steps in realizing your dreams, going for it. I will definitely include that workshop you just mentioned in my show notes and uh, promote it in any way I can for you. Thank I you. definitely think it's something necessary. As you mentioned, the, the evolution that's organic of creating a course. I've been working on a few courses and I find they're all on my wall here, like ideas and concepts. And a lot of it just keeps evolving. Like I know intuitively what I'm trying to articulate, but when I start expressing it and sharing with other souls, it evolves. And then one day I'll be like, oh, that's it. This is what I've been trying to articulate, but it wasn't until I had the engagement with other souls Yes. That it, it, there was a fire in me and I just see it. Where two or more are gathered. Yes. Yes. My goodness. I, I just, I, I'm just so happy that you're in my life and. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Such a blessing. Well, thank you, Donna. Uh, have a lovely sunny day. If it's sunny now in Costa Rica. And I would love to have you back in the future. If you're it would be my honor, Shilpa. Thank you so much for having me. Really, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure for me as well. Thanks again for tuning in. Check out the links in the description and please subscribe, follow, and share and continue to practice Omni Mindfulness.